Hey there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Georgina and I'm the Honest Vocal Coach. I teach singing all day every day when I'm not making videos like this one. And if you want to work with me, you can. I have an online singing course plus a free breathing course. All the links are in the description. And if you like what you see today, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. <laughs> So after an epic three months, Eurovision is over and I'm so sad. I feel like a show has just ended when I used to be in musicals and take part in shows. You know, that family, that unit that you have for, you know, three months or however long the show is and then it's finished. I feel like I've lost something. Oh, I just, yeah, I'm a little bit emotional about the whole thing. It's been a tremendous journey. I've loved being part of the Eurovision community. Oh, so before we dive in and do a recap of what happened last night at the grand final, including talking about who won Eurovision 2021 this year, I've got to say what a fantastic competition it's been this year. The quality was really, really high. There were some incredibly great songs. My personal favourites, Switzerland, France. I was so sure that they were going to win. They were so close. Also, Malta and quite the soft spot for Portugal. I know I've said this before, but I love the track. It's just laid back and chocolatey and vibey and just fabulous. But that vocal from Switzerland and from France... Wow. And what do we think of Graham Norton, the UK uh, presenter this year, narrator, whatever you want to call it, commentator? I thought Graham actually did a really good job. He had a good balance between the taking the mickey, but also being really fair to Eurovision. And just the fact how it brings so many people together, how they managed to put the show on against all the odds. Okay, so let's dive into the recap. Okay, so beginning with El Diablo from Cyprus. Very good song. I really enjoyed it. Um, was a little bit pitchy at the beginning. Probably nerves, if I'm completely honest with you. Um, there were lots and lots of backing vocals, and it definitely has been a thing this year. The backing vocals, some have used it to boost the songs. Others have cheated that little bit and really used it to support those lead vocals. And the talent really should have been there, so they didn't need to do that. But anyway, there's there's my little rant about that. Um, I thought Cypress had a really good stage presence. The overall stage in it was excellent. The flames at the back, uh, yeah. People have said it has a similarity to a specific Lady Gaga song. I can't quite hear it, um, but yeah, you let me know in the comments below. Can you hear it? Maybe we should try a mashup and see if it is, you know, uh, a bit too similar. A brilliant, brilliant entry from Cyprus. <laughs> Okay, so next on was Albania. Superb vocals, great staging. I just felt it kind of lacked a little bit of something in the background. Maybe some dancers. I know they were limited this year as well on the amount of people that they were allowed to have on stage but I think a couple of dances in a floaty outfit might have just added to the performance but a vocal was very good uh, and it was windy on stage so Israel came next uh, Aiden had such a well-controlled vocal 
confident uh, use of nasality in certain places the staging was good and it really improved from the semi-final I noticed that with a lot of the acts in the final which is only natural isn't it you get to use those semi-finals as a little bit of a warm-up if you make it to the grand final you give it everything and you learn from those semi-finals and this is definitely the case for this song the vocal did deteriorate a little bit as the song went on um, slightly pitchy on the second whistle if I'm really honest with you but it was overall an incredible performance plus the highest note sung ever in Eurovision but was that first whistle maybe lip sync so number four Belgium Hooverphonic the wrong place excellent song love the moody sort of feel of this I did notice that there seemed to be a lot more effects on this compared to the semi-finals almost like they really upped the amount of effects and stuff that was added to the lead microphones i don't know if that's just me but i did notice a distinct improvement and a little bit more use of those effects there was more delay there was reverb there plus a real good amount of compression as well um definitely more confident than the semi-final uh, and i love the storytelling lyrics i'm probably going to remember most about the johnny cash t-shirt uh Brilliant. So Russia, ah, oh, my favourite bit was that crazy beginning when she has that kind of Russian doll outfit and she's kind of moving around the stage. Just brilliant. The kind of extra that we love at Eurovision. The song's personally not my cup of tea, but it was a great performance and a little bit whaley near the end vocally. Okay, number six, Malta. Now, we actually thought that Malta might be one of the winners. So, it's slightly disappointing to see her not quite near that top. And right at the end of this video, I will be looking at the scoreboard so we can see exactly who was in what place. Uh, but Malta, very strong vocal, better again than the semi final. She hit that top note. Uh, it's definitely grown on me even more, this song. Her charisma was intoxifying and she, she nailed it. I wasn't sure about the split screen with the three lines doing this i'm not sure if that was a i don't know it didn't didn't really work for me um i think they didn't need that split screen thing but either way uh, i thought malta was fantastic this year portugal Ah, oh, my soft spot. My oh, I love Portugal song. Uh, it's a song that just it's it's ah oh, I can't even speak. It's velvety. It's like chocolate. It's a warm hug. I love those guys. They don't take themselves too seriously, but they really do when it comes to their music. The performance was wonderful. It was classy. The use of black and white into color, genius. <laughs> Serbia, ah, oh, girl band heaven, all of that hairography, all of those hair extensions, they were so fierce, the girl in the middle, I should learn her name, I do apologise, she was the best vocalist from the three, she was so confident, she went even bigger than the other two girls, and her vocals, really, really on point for me. <laughs> The United Kingdom, James Newman and Embers. Oh, I feel so sorry for the UK right now. I really do because there were worse songs in the competition. I really don't feel that the UK deserved nil poids 
I, we deserved a little bit more than that. But do you know what? James was so proud of what they'd achieved. Everybody stood up and gave James such a massive applause at the end, even though they got the nil point. We so didn't deserve to be at the bottom. But there you go. This is what happens with the votes. Those votes were absolutely brutal when it came to the public votes being added. The jury's votes, it was all lovely and amazing and like oh you can see Switzerland are going up and France are going up and this is great and then all of a sudden Italy comes right up those votes and poor UK well ugh. I thought that James actually did really well on the night so well done to Annabelle Williams who was his vocal coach and also for her backing vocals on the track um, I thought that it was a good performance from him he really worked hard on being able to sing and dance at the same time not something that it was in his comfort zone the song was good but just not strong enough to be in the top of the leaderboard. Last Dance, Greece. Now, this song was really good, but I've said this before, I think the staging really let it down. The stairs of the green screen, it must have been so hilarious for the people actually in the arena watching these guys dressed in green, kind of weird leotard outfits doing the dancing. It just didn't seem obvious to me what they were trying to portray with the no faces and things. Uh, there was a reason for that, but unfortunately it didn't really come across very well. I thought it could have been staged a lot better, and I think if it had had better staging, it might have been a little bit higher in the list, because the song was pretty good. The choreography as well, oof, yeah, ah, that was definitely not the best. Switzerland. This was probably my personal winner along with France. I adore Switzerland's voice. It was the best vocal from the entire show. The stillness to the sense of motion, uh, and it's not a giant hashtag, Graham Norton, <laughs> really. Uh, I thought it was so effective. The vocal, the vocal, and again, the actual vocal. Uh, it, it just uh, yeah just blown away by his vocal just a well deserving third actually thought it was gonna win close to the end there i was like come on switzerland come on and voila with like france and switzerland i thought switzerland was gonna win So, Iceland, very funky, slick, nerdy, real, such good use of timing, including the pyrotechnics at the end of the performance, that sudden psh, people on Twitter were like, was that supposed to happen? Yes, it was clever, genius, I love that specific style, and the low parts of his voice just bowled me over. And the hand on the hip got me every single time. Spain, one of the big five, uh, and that means that they put their most financial support in, so the big five countries. Um, I thought the moon was actually a picture first time round. That moon, I thought, oh, is that a picture? But no, it was actually a real prop, a giant moon on stage. Um, very beautiful voice, uh, great transitions, the falsetto at the end, phenomenal. But I thought it was a little bit self-indulgent and I also thought it was a little bit wishy-washy. Moldova. I actually thought this was one of the weaker songs originally, but it kind of grew on me. Her vocal was really ropey at the beginning, and the use of the backing vocals was literally to support her the whole way through. Uh, the only bit that she really got the opportunity to belt out was that long note at the end, and she dropped her microphone, but being super professional, it was scooped up pretty quick to help her carry on. I think that movement of the stage the triangle thing moving around I think it's a diamond actually not a triangle I don't think that helped her all that much um, unfortunately I think it did have a knock on effect to her vocals uh, but unfortunately vocally it just 
Germany, I don't feel hate. Now this is loads of fun. I like this. I was so waiting for that tap routine. Uh, and it's like a middle finger. It, lots of people on Twitter were saying, what, there's a middle finger on stage? Yes, there is. But wait, the following song also has a middle finger. Finland blind channel the dark side join a bit of fun symphonic rock I really enjoyed this one I thought that the staging was really good the performance was excellent really had that sort of symphonic rock kind of vibe Bulgaria, this actually did better in the leaderboard than I expected it to. Um, because originally when I first reacted to the video, I thought it was a beautiful song, very strong, really well put across. But then seeing it on stage, it didn't really get to me as much. I didn't connect with it. Um, but in that final performance, she did really well. But the only negative I've got there was the use again of the backing vocals. I think if she hadn't have got that backing vocal in there, she may have struggled with the lead. And I think maybe this is something that that they need to readdress for next year. Are they going to be allowed to have those backing vocals on the track? I think it should be actual live vocals, so backing vocalists rather than the vocals on the track. <laughs> Lithuania, the roop! Oh, this was so fun. The, the kind of cheesy dance quirkiness that we need for Eurovision. The Roop did great. I thought they might do a little bit better in the scores than they did. Uh, the performance was good. Uh, but yeah, it was just the moves. I think the moves stuck in my head more than anything else. <laughs> Ukraine, not really my fave. Now, this is just because it's not my cup of tea. I'm not into that sort of EDM ravey kind of stuff. Uh, it's just not my thing. Uh, and he was so not playing that whistle, recorder, whatever you want to call it. He was so just pretending it was obviously on the track. Um, it's not my thing. Kind of gave me a headache. But I totally understand people who appreciate this kind of music. It's just not my thing. <laughs> France, absolutely phenomenal, so well deserved as that number two. Dramatic, so French with that Edith Piaf kind of feel. Incredible filmic way that it was done. Very simplistic. Uh, the singing straight to your heart. She really directed it right at the individual. There was a couple of vocal crackles in there and I also feel in that final she built the vocals up a bit too quickly. In the rehearsal I felt that she built those vocals up to her head a little bit more gently than when she did actually in the final. Twenty one Azerbaijan, the fierce lyrics, slight elements of last year's song within it. Uh, better dancing than in the semi final, I must say. So much more in control of it. I think she was so much more confident in general on straight on stage. Uh, there was a low note where she sung the words trying, and it was like, oh yeah, that was awesome. Big improvement, sexy passionate still slightly ariana with the the uh, ponytail uh, but a good song nonetheless Norway and Ticks. This one really grew on me. Kind of reminded me of East 17. Uh, like the staging, it was fun. The huge wings, the chains, You Are Not Alone. Really good concept. Pop ballad, gorgeous. You know my the Netherlands, the hosts. 
Now this was disappointing for me. I thought that the song was a little bit too repetitive, although it had a really good concept. Um, to say that there is such talent in the Netherlands, I'm not sure this one came up to the bar. But I thought that the African beat did really good, you know, was a big part of the song and it kind of kept the interest. <laughs> Okay, three left. Italy, Italy, who won the competition. Who knew? I mean, the bookies did. They had a good idea that it was going to be Italy, but I didn't. This came straight out the water, this one. Uh, so different. The speed that he sang those lyrics was so very impressive. Loud, heavy, fierce, glam rock. Awesome performance. Sweden. Now, I wasn't sure about this song. I didn't think it was strong enough to get through to the final, but it did. I actually like the mamas that didn't get the chance to do it again this year. Um, the lyrics were too simple for me. Lovely vocal, though. Nice staging. But I just thought the lyrics were a little bit simplistic. In the rain, in the rain. Ta So finally, San Marino, this one, oh my goodness, the comments on Twitter afterwards were quite hilarious. Uh, Flo Rida coming to join, we kind of thought it would do better in the leaderboard, but it kind of didn't. Um, it just goes to show that having a famous person on stage with you does not necessarily mean you're going to win or do better in the competition. Song is king. Uh, it was lovely to see Glynis Grace performing on the interval. Uh, I've not heard her sing for quite a while. A bit of titanium there. Did look like some of it was lip sync though, which was just a little bit of a shame for me. One of my favourite parts of the night, as the juries were giving their votes, was Iceland. Let's just have a look. I would personally like you to play Yaya Ding Dong. <laughs> Play Ya Ya Ding Dong! Just brilliant! The Eurovision movie, if you haven't seen it, it's worth a watch. I thought the jokes were way too crude, but the whole idea of it and being, you know, true to your roots and being proud of where you're from, just brilliant songs in it as well, including Molly Sandon, just superb. Right, so let's take a look at those final votes. Look how shocked they are. This one guy, Tomas, he's still like he can't quite take it in. He's like, did we actually win? Did we actually win? Yes, you did. Well done, guys. Okay, so this is the last winner's board. We've got Italy as the winner. France came second. Switzerland as third. I, I actually thought Switzerland were going to win. They were so close to staying at that number one spot. But Italy with the public votes came through and wasn't it brutal those oh the votes wow the jury's votes were great it was lovely but when it got to the public votes oh, wow the changes on the board so if we go to number four we've got Iceland that was a pretty good placement Ukraine below that Finland Malta Lithuania Russia Greece Bulgaria Portugal and Moldova then as you can see on the other side of the board so gutted for United Kingdom they didn't deserve zero points nil point Germany quirky song did it really deserve to be that low Spain maybe but sometimes it's that public vote well it is it's the public vote that can really swing it so quite a controversial ending to this year's eurovision 2021 bit going on on twitter to do with italy uh did he didn't he i'll let you look into that and decide for yourself but just just the ride of everyone's lives it was a phenomenal final 
I absolutely loved it. So I will be back doing more Eurovision reactions. So I'm going to be taking a look at some more of the performances from Eurovision final and probably a look at the interval performances as well. Maybe a little bit of Davina Michelle and maybe Glynis Grace, especially as well. I really liked Duncan Lawrence's performance at the end as well of Stars, his new single. So again, thank you. I can't believe I'm saying goodbye from the Eurovision. Just, ah, just, oh, I so have to be there next year. Anyone there, get, just let me in that press room. So I will see you next year in Italy. But don't forget, Junior Eurovision, December. See you there. Bye-bye, loves. Bye.